In this video I'm going to show you some problematic running that a chainsaw can produce that can be sorted out by adjusting the fuel screws on the carburettor. So if we can get the chainsaw running like this and it's revving up ok, it starts ok then all well and good. But in order for me to explain some of the things that can go wrong with the chainsaw I'll have to first explain what's going on when the chainsaw's running well so we can come back and compare it. So to do that let's take a look inside this chainsaw at its engine and carburettor. And because I've got to show you the processes that go on inside the carburettor I've made it scalably larger than it would be in real life compared to the engine. So let's have a look at the sort of thing that goes on inside the carburettor that needs to happen to lead to the chainsaw starting and running well. And then we can show and understand how these processes fail in order to lead to a chainsaw that doesn't run correctly. And let's start right at the beginning when the operator pulls the starter pull cord. With each pull of the cord, the engine movement draws in air through the air filter, through the induction tube of the carburettor, in through the engine and then forces it out through the exhaust. So as long as the piston's moving, there's that constant airflow right through. And as this airflow passes through the restriction of the Venturi, it creates a suction pressure right up the main jet. This suction pressure draws fuel into the main jet out of the metering area above. It's then drawn right down to the end of the main jet and out into the Venturi. It's then hit hard by the fast moving air moving through the restriction of the Venturi, thus separating it into smaller particles in a process called atomization and this is now atomized fuel. And so it's this atomized fuel that's now combustible inside the engine. And that's where the airflow draws it into. So now we can see the basics of how the fuel is drawn in for the starting process. OK, so choke on, ignition on, chain brake on, and we'll start the engine. Once the engine has fired, the choke plate that was closed and causing a rich supply of fuel going into the engine for initial startup can now be opened. And so now one more pull of the cord and the engine starts. Opening the choke plate has allowed an increased amount of air to flow through the Venturi and atomize the fuel that it is drawing out of the main jet. But what's happening inside the carburettor to produce an issue like this. Each time the throttle trigger is pulled to rev up the engine, it just bogs and dies. Well, everything's working fine with the throttle itself. The plate is indeed opening with every pull of the trigger. But for some reason, that's not resulting in what should be happening. And that is a higher flow rate of air being drawn through the venturi of the carburettor drawing out a greater amount of fuel to support higher engine revs. Well, certainly in this case with incorrect fuel adjustment screw settings, where the high screw is screwed too far in, even with the throttle plate wide open, there's no extra air going through the carburettor because there's only so much fuel allowed out of the main jet. And that amount is enough for idling speed but because there's only this amount allowed out, then when it comes to try and rev the engine, and the engine needs more fuel, then the engine's not going to rev up. There just isn't enough fuel for higher engine revs. And of course, without sufficient amount of fuel for maximum engine revs, then the engine's not going to draw in a maximum amount of air through the carburettor. So it's a knock-on effect. We need the air to draw out the fuel, but if the fuel is restricted in some way, then the fuel is going to prevent the engine from running at a maximum, and therefore prevent maximum intake of air. So in a nutshell, whether this throttle plate is either open or closed, there's only the same amount of fuel going into the engine that's sufficient for idling only. And so now, if we want to correct this, then it's worth trying to adjust the H-screw outwards anti-clockwise slowly until the problem subsides. And in this instance, it's sorted. So to understand how that corrected the problem, we need to look at how the main jet's fuel adjustment system works. 
In basic terms, we already know that when the engine is running, fuel is drawn into the main jet out of the metering reservoir above and down into the venturi. But the amount of fuel that goes this way has to pass through a very small orifice at the top, so only a certain volume of flow of fuel can go this way. And we can see just how small this orifice is on the carburetor itself. But the amount of fuel that can pass this small orifice may be adequate for idling revs, but it's not enough for maximum revs. And so a supply of fuel from this hole alone would cause the engine to bog when throttling. So this fuel needs to be supplemented, and that's where this fuel tube comes in. As you can see, this is connected to the main tube and has a wider orifice at the top. So looking at the actual carburetor again, this is the orifice we're talking about, and as you can see, it's much larger than that on the main jet tube. If I remove the main jet and the high screw, and then dim the lights and shine a torch through the high screw hole, we can clearly see the large orifice that the fuel goes down and where it comes out to enter the side of the main jet to supplement its fuel. And now I've took the main jet out, we can clearly see how small that orifice is on top of the main jet in comparison to how wide it is at the bottom where the fuel comes out in the venturi. There would usually be a small valve here at the bottom of the main jet which I've removed so we can see down it. So under normal engine running, fuel would enter this tube and then join the main jet fuel. And so at this point, it supplemented the main jet and there's enough fuel available for high engine revs. And so the way we can simply adjust the fuel and thus engine revs is by adjusting the H screw or the high screw. So the high screw protrudes into the carburetor body from its adjustable screw head on the outside all the way through to its specialised end that protrudes into the fuel tube. So basically, the more we screw this screw inwards clockwise, the more it's blocking off the fuel that would supplement the main jet. And in doing that, the high revs would go from running correctly like this to more like this, which is usually said to be running too lean. And whilst this seems like the engine's got more power, it's usually considered as over-revving. And of course, if we continue to screw in and over-adjust, we're going to get this bogged down. Because it's now blocking off way too much fuel. So the obvious remedy for this is to turn the screw anti-clockwise out to let more fuel down. In this scenario, each time we press the throttle, the engine's running lumpy and there's quite a lot of smoke emitting from the exhaust. So in terms of mixture screw settings, the problem here is over adjustment in the opposite direction, meaning the screw is screwed out too far. And if it's over adjusted out too far, then it's going to allow too much fuel down there, creating too much of a fuel rich fuel to air ratio. So this time, the engine's bogging due to too much fuel, more than it's capable of combusting. So in this situation, it's worth trying to adjust the H-screw again, but this time clockwise inwards steadily until this problem subsides. So to just sum things up, this is bog due to a lack of fuel going into the engine. And this is bog due to too much fuel going into the engine. There's a clear distinct difference between the two. And when the engine's running correctly, it's unmistakable. So in terms of high rev settings, the secret to the engine running well at high revs is all determined by the position of the tip of the fuel adjustment screw within the fuel tube. Again, we've got an unfavorable situation here where the chainsaw makes that bog sound before it revs up. But this time, it's also having trouble idling. 
if it wasn't for the fact that I keep pulsating on the throttle trigger, then the engine would definitely die. So what could possibly be causing this inside the carburettor this time? Well, the flag for me here is the chainsaw's trouble idling in combination with that bog sound each time we have to press the throttle trigger to keep the engine going. Unlike this situation that we've already looked at, where the H-screw was screwed too far in, making the fuel mixture too lean and thus bogging down, as we can see this does idle okay between the high revs. So the problem we are dealing with is very much the idling settings on the carburettor. And of course a large part of that is down to the L-screw or the low screw, which of course means the settings for low revs. All the time that the engine's been running and the carburettor's been supplying fuel, this area has been hard at work helping that process. These are the low jets and these supply fuel in addition to the main fuel coming out of the main jet. And so whilst the main jet still has an important role in supplying fuel at low revs, the correct running of the engine is also reliant on the fuel drawn out of the low jets. So that means the main jet and the low jets work together as a whole to supply the total amount of fuel to the engine for correct engine running at idling speed. And so because the engine is reliant on the amount of fuel coming out of the high jet and the low jets, it's sensitive to those precise amounts. And any altering of the amount of fuel that comes out of either of these jets, either more or less, will have an effect on engine running. But at idling speed, there's only a certain amount of fuel that can be drawn out of the main jet, because the engine, of course, isn't running as fast, creating the high flow of air coming through the carburettor, and therefore the suction pressure that draws the fuel out of the jet is much less. So this is where the importance of the low jet and its very design comes into its own. Designed for its delicateness in providing the fuel to the engine at idling speed, it's the low jets that can be adjusted to affect the quality of idling and the engine's ability to pick up revs when the throttle trigger is pulled. That's the reason why it's vital that the low revs are set correctly. So what can go wrong in the carburettor then to stop this system from working correctly? Well, as always, let's have a look at what's happening when the engine's running good, so we can take a look at what's happening when the engine's running bad. First of all, just like the high jet, we've got a screw to make adjustments to the amount of fuel emitting from the low jet, but the way the jetting works is slightly different, especially in its tubular structures. We'll find that the low jet system has its own small fuel reservoir, where under normal working conditions, the suction pressure from the venturi below draws the fuel down out of the metering reservoir through the low jet fuel hole and fills the reservoir. Putting that into perspective a little more, right next to the low jet fuel hole there is a core plug or a Welsh plug. And underneath that Welsh plug is this compartment that's just been filled. And having a look on this carburettor that's had the core plug removed, the fuel has gone down the low jet fuel hole, through the fuel way, out through the small hole in this corner where it comes in and floods the compartment. And as I've previously mentioned, even though some of this fuel comes out of here, whether it's idling speed or maximum revs, it's the idling speed that's sensitive to the fuel flow from these three holes. And if we take this torch and shine through these little holes and have a look in the induction tube, you can clearly see that all three have a direct route to there. And depending on the position of the low jet screw will depend on how much fuel is allowed to flow into this compartment to be used down in the induction tube below at idling speed. So its principle is the same as the high jet screw. If we turn this screw in clockwise, then its tip will protrude into the fuel way more and restrict more of the fuel entering the small reservoir. And it goes without saying, if there's less fuel here, then there's less fuel to go down into the Venturi for the engine's idling speed. So when the chainsaw is giving these type of symptoms, it can be suspected that the L-screw is screwed too far in, not allowing enough fuel down the pipes. And whilst there are other reasons why a chainsaw might run like this, 
such as blockages in certain areas of the carburettor. It should be noted that it's well worth trying to adjust the L screw before any major work is taken out on the carburettor. So therefore, if we screw the L screw outwards, that will allow the fuel it needs to enter the pipes and into the induction tube. So we screw the L screw anti-clockwise until the engine starts to sound better. OK, so in this example, the engine is idling a little lumpy and there's a bit more than usual smoke emitting from the exhaust, although it's quite difficult to see on camera. And so what's likely happening here then is that there's too much fuel coming out into the induction tube of the carburettor because the L screw is screwed out too far allowing too much fuel down and the engine is struggling to efficiently combust this amount of fuel. So the obvious remedy for this is to screw the L screw inwards clockwise to restrict some of that fuel, thus making it a more suitable amount for the engine to combust. In this instance the engine revs are high and the chain's running before we press the throttle. So it's worth adjusting the third screw, labelled T screw, So what just happened when I adjusted that exactly? Well, when the chainsaw is idling normally, the throttle plate is open just enough to allow just enough air to come through the carburettor that creates just enough suction pressure to draw out just enough fuel from the jets to maintain idling speed. And what holds the throttle plate in a certain position is this mechanism. This is the T adjustment screw for the idling. This adjustment screw is threaded through part of the carburettor and its tip contacts a small lever. And this lever is in direct contact with the throttle plate. So when adjustments are made to the T-screw and it's screwed either inwards or outwards, because the tip of the T-screw is connected to the lever, it moves the lever with it. And because the throttle plate is in direct connection to the lever, any movement of the T-screw moves the throttle plate. So all that was happening when the chainsaw's idling speed was too high is that the throttle plate was open a little too much. So all that was needed was a small adjustment to the T-screw to close the throttle plate slightly. OK, so I hope this video has helped you learn a few things you never knew before and please understand that this is how this system works to the best of my own knowledge and beliefs. And in the meantime, I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll be back soon.